Beckman School. Mm -hmm. I since I I, my, my, I started the Deutsch, and I really did my class Latin in uh, E pluribus unum, you know, or, you know, and uh, so I, I took Spanish. So we had a better educational system when I was younger. We actually learned to speak multiple languages. But I, I, I pick up enough that I can understand it. the questions in Spanish were, not, were being asked were sort of condensed a little bit when they got from fair upwards. And uh, I guess another funny thing is the gentleman that basically put this all together with the, um, the one organization did very little speaking. Mm. He was more questioning because um, he was sort of a, I mean, um, I would never walk into a room with a product that I was pushing that I wasn't more fully aware of than anyone else in the room, including the producer. Mm -hmm. And actually it was a Telemundo executive, not, uh, and the only one connected with the show was the young lady, which means they're pushing her for an Emmy. Mm -hmm. And the network is pushing her for, pushing the show for an Emmy for the show. Yep. And probably photography. Right. They had, they had, they, okay. Um, oh, we're going to try again. Mr. Romano, you want to hear what music is like? Go watch this show. And you'll hear what music on a budget is like. You know, you know, mm -hmm. because they did, they had a really vibrant musical music that basically fit in with what they were doing. And you know that that was all original. Well, his was all, all original, whereas um, when Romano did that, of a certain age, I think they tried to do more pop music. They're doing canned music. They're basically buying music out, the prefab music that they're allowed mm -hmm. to. They're basically, they buy a disc. I can get the disc, you know, I've worked on this. They put it in a thing and then you can pick tracks off. You've already paid for the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did have some music, original music. I mean, my heart on that show, oh God, yes. What? Well, I may, I may be hard on them at a certain age. I really am because I look, I have looked at, I, I have looked at men at a certain age. I have looked at cinema verite. I've looked at the, um, the, you know, uh, Spartacus, uh, mm -hmm. you know, God's the Arena, and I've looked at this visually. This was the best visual piece of material we saw, and it's from another. It's uh, the other, well, the other thing is from New Zealand, but I know that people from New, I know that New Zealand film industry is capable of dazzling the world if they choose to. Mm -hmm. Instead, they basically had a budget, and because they're not on HBO, they had a budget. But Telemundo doesn't have an ungodly amount of money to spend mm -hmm. either, because they have a limited audience. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so and. Uh, and mostly this is being set up for the Latin speaking world, where it is, you know, actually... They never done on location. I'm just, you know, part of it is they never do tell you what the budgets are. You're always just kind of curious. I mean, obviously with um, men of a certain age, the budget's heavy into uh, the three the talent. Actors, the talent. And, and even Cinema Verity, it's a talent. They have a talent, but basically you could get away on Cinema Verite because Cinema Verite was done in Cinema reality basically they had a camera crew filming a camera crew which means you can afford to you get good quality but you're trying to make it look like it was a documentary being done about a documentary mm -hmm. so you could fudge a bit the acting was a superior quality photography was done to rep photography of that time period mm -hmm. but um, this was done specifically I mean it's almost like um, tele Mundo set their mind in motion, uh, was it two years ago when they started this project, to get an Emmy nomination. Mm -hmm. Because it was done, they said it was, it was more extremely expensive compared to other work they have done. And you can see it on, you see the money on the screen. You, the actors may, some of the actors... No, no it wasn't floating yeah, across. <laughs> some of the actors overact, others didn't overact. The gentleman that was playing her husband wasn't overacting. Mm -hmm. The bad guys, all yeah. the bad guys, except for the guy playing the Godfather, were overacting. Yeah. You know, you see the two really pros, the two that had done American television a lot, mm -hmm. basically doing, you know, their, you know, their, it's their, it's their job, it's what they do for a living, they do it. But the, the Latino actors, the real ones, you know, they're, they're over macho and everything. But do you think that's part of Latin acting? It's part of Latin acting. Because, I mean, when I say that, it's because the Latins, I mean, it's more colorful yeah. in general, whether it's oh. the color and everything. I mean, it's I more worked, demonstrative. I, I've worked with Tony Aguilar Sr. and Tony Aguilar Jr., Pedro Almendera Sr. and Pedro Almendera Jr. And the fathers were grandos. The sons work in the United States primarily. They are more, you know, 
Um, they're, they're acting for what they want the American audience wants. Aguilera Sr. and Amandora Sr. are more, hey, hi, you know, because Almost they, like they're on stage, you know, in the theaters. Yeah. People in the chick feeds can see they, and hear what right. you're saying. They're, uh, they're more, they're louder. They're, they are trying to project to the back thing, but they're overdoing everything. Where the gentleman playing her husband and the gentleman playing the godfather were underdoing everything. They were actually throwing the scenes to the woman that was the star. Yeah. Whereas the other guys, I think, were trying to take the scenes because they didn't like the fact that a woman was a star. Mm -hmm. So it, there's a difference because in our country, women women are featured in the god awful the carry movies. I mean, we've got Angelina Jolie who carries action movies. Mm -hmm. We have um, Sigourney Weaver who carries action movies. We got a lot. Of, we had Joan Crawford who was an action movie star. Barbara Stanwyck action movie. You know, Mercedes McCambridge of all people could do action stuff, but. Um, uh, but it, there was just not quite an acceptable thing. So I think the men were simply being a little bit over the top because, you know, this is a man's world, honey. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, but I do think it was a bit of a shock on her part last night when the guy from Telemundo made a statement that had nothing to do with why she's worked planning on the oh, future. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's just like she's talking about the fact that, um, that you know, they're asking her what her future plans are. She's telling about all the movies and stuff that she's planned in the future. And then he comes over, and then the guy from the said, yeah, well, we've got on the works, you know, other things like, you know, important things about the, the, uh, about the, the, the bitch that the woman is playing. Monty comes into the green side. <laughs> no, but... Um, it, it just, like I said, it's a rarity that a woman carries something in, in Latin cinema. Yeah, it is, because it's a male-dominated society. You know, she spent a lot of time in our country, and I think that has an influence on her carrying herself on the screen. Mm. So, yeah, but like I said, I'm going, I would push him, and I, I consider it heavily in the field of photography. Oh, interesting. Of the things that I saw, okay. I'm talking the best editing that I saw, period, flat out, was on Cinema Verite. Yeah. There's no, there's no comprehension. There's no nothing competition. On, there's no nothing competition close. editing. Of the four things I saw, the best photography was uh, Lorena del Sur. Mm -hmm. That is, it just, it just, like I said, they have a tradition of rich, colorful filming in, in Mexico. It mm -hmm. showed on the screen. They yeah. put the money where it counts is making things look visually beautiful. And the acting was very, was, was, you know, like, there was, you, okay. If they'd have been speaking in English, you couldn't have told it was not an American production. Other than it's more colorful. More colorful, but we, we used to do that. We haven't done it quite like that. I know, but we used to, when I was young, we used to do things like that. It could have been a new style. That's right, but you know, everything that old is new again. But I mean, I can imagine, okay, um, I can, okay, I know the networks are talking about doing telenovelas for the United States. Uh, some of them, you know, NBC, of course, because they own Telemundo. Uh, and I think Fox is planning it. The problem is, is that they don't go over well. People do not want to see uh, a five-day-a-week thing because um, they'll, they'll, okay, here it works. You can do the serial thing, which is once a week, and at the end of the thing, tune in next week, same time, same date, and see whether, you know, our hero is actually blown up in the train that is careening to his destruction. That they'll see, but will they turn in? Tune in tomorrow to see, you know, whether she is raped or not. Tune in tomorrow to see whether she blows the guy's head up tomorrow. Tune in tomorrow to see whether she loses her underwear or not. Mm -hmm. uh, it does, we don't, we don't, we have a, a very low attention span in our country. <laughs> So, um, and it's not just kids. No, because it's an adult audience. This is not a kiddie show. No. None of the telenovelas. I mean, we've talked to Eric Estrada. Eric Estrada's career was reborn by doing a telenovela. Oh, was it? Yeah. He, you know, mm -hmm. she didn't want to do what he needed to money, and it basically was the best thing in the world he could ever done. It made him an international star instead of just an American star, which is why he can arrogantly do the thing now like he did when he was punched, because he is an international Latin star because of a telenovela. Oh, and he's so likable oh, anyway. Oh, he's a nice, funny guy. So he really is. He's just funny. You listen to him talking, he's funny. Just, uh, like I said, well, one of the things, you know, on the rap that I really appreciate is that, uh, is that 
the people are sitting on there talking to other people, just like they were sitting around a, a you know, you were saying, like, like, like you were having coffee in a mm -hmm. restaurant or something. You're just sitting there talking to everybody. Yeah. This isn't talking down. This is making jokes They're about things. They're just like thing. talking to peers. Like, you know, it's like you're. It is. It's like, okay. hey, we're catching up. Like, you know, how was that last show you did? And, and, right. Yeah, and then he, oh, 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 oh. You know, when they got, they thought of something else to say. Yeah. That was, was like her last night. You know, like that that nine year old little girl who always oh, 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 oh. You know, you know, she's gonna. She just remembers something else to talk about. So she actually. She took so much control of what was going on, they didn't get to ask as many questions. <laughs> she was in control of the room. A lot of it has to do with the fact... Was she had a commanding performance. She's playing uh, the, the lead of a telenovela um, in an industry that's male-dominated. And right, and she did take charge because she, she expanded upon everything she was asked and went beyond everything well, was asked. You know, here's part of it is I am really looking forward to seeing who actually gets Emmy nominations since we've yeah. been watching some of these different shows and we're seeing episodes, actually these are the episodes that they've um, they pick. submitted. It's right, yeah. they submitted or they picked or, you know, for them to go ahead and look at. Yeah. Well, they actually, this is what they're giving to the people that are voting um, yeah. as to what they want them to remember them by. Yeah, and, 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 I mean, I've yeah. done this before in my life. This was her first ever experience doing it and she basically I look at it things from the same direction that a lot of the people in the audience that are members, they look at production values, writing, acting, all of that stuff. Uh, and she's looking at it from the... Pure uh, entertainment. From pure entertainment. So, and a fan. And a fan, which makes it work different because, I mean, uh, which is funny, I'm the, I, I do all the cutting, so... <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm the one that could make the decisions on how it's going to be. I mean, I can, I could actually slant it towards all me, or slant it towards all her, so I actually do do a balancing act. Well, it's actually kind of interesting, because when you talk about cutting, um, it brings me back to Cinema Verde, where they shot, they shot a tremendous amount of footage. Yeah. And they were sitting there talking about, you know, they were trying to project for the cameras the, how they, people, they wanted people to see them. And... You know, at the end, they talk about how they didn't realize how much power there was in the editing of it. Yeah. It, it really is power in the editing. Um, mm -hmm. I can guess that the telenovela, like, the, the, like uh, you know, La Reina de Sur drives an editor crazy. Because he's got to have so much material that's not actually going up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I know that... Um, we would shoot 20 to 1. Well, you know, and here's part of it is they're shooting for a show every single day, right? Yeah. Just like a regular um, soap opera. But that also means they shoot it, you got to get it. they has got to get they, it. You look at all that footage, you got to go through it really quickly. And the actors aren't being able, because it's, uh, it's you know, they said um, generally it's, uh, they, they did 62 episodes would have been done in 62 days. They took seven months to do this. And uh, they had the benefit of the man who wrote the book as the head writer. Yeah, that did help. But it did help. And I think that she said she also read the book about ten times during the movie. And they also had the benefit of they did have, unlike soap operas, they had the material all in front of them so they could see what was going on. Oh, they happen. did? That's what Because I thought, done. you know, every day they got a different script. No, they, they gave them the material so they knew what they were doing, which means you knew. Uh, well, where the character was going. Well, yeah, like, well, hey, tomorrow I'm going to be raped. i got to have my clothes off. I better, not, I better look good tomorrow. Now, but remember, like I said, we, we, we've got, um, we have a balance. We have a unique balance between the telenovelas are basically, they, they, they can do sexy and violence, mm -hmm. but they really can't do overt naked. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can do sexy and overt naked, but you can't do really violence on our stuff. So. And it is being shown on American TV. It was filmed for us, not filmed for it. It basically is dumped over the other countries, but actually filmed for us. This is Telemundo. Mm -hmm. It was filmed for us in the United States. And they film it because it was uh, it was totally aimed for the American audience. Totally. I think two years ago that that N people at NBC made the, the decision we want to do something that can carry over. And it is the highest rated telenovela ever made. But she's got, this woman has got a history of the, you know, she's basically the first Latino star woman to make it into American mm -hmm. cinema and also American television. She starred in the highest grossing Latin movie ever shown in the United States. Now mm -hmm. she starred in the highest rated um, Spanish program ever shown in this nation. That's a big deal. Yeah, and she's still under 40. 
-hmm. So her, you know, she just got. Oh, you know you're going to see her. I mean, she's just full of life and yeah. character. She's a, a really, she's a vibrant, bubbly person. Mm -hmm. And like I said, she has washing behind us, you know, doing the, you know, washing up in the screen. And, you know, just watching what's going on. She's seen it already. And she's pacing back and forth about washing from one end to the other when she was doing that. She's, she's washing. She's washing herself, you know. You say... Oh my God! I think I showed a little bit too much of my butt. You know? Well, no, she probably showed all her butt. The editor cut mm -hmm. it back, so. But um, no, but it's uh, it's all her. She chews up the scenery. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a Joan Crawford, Betty Davis uh, it is. performance. It really is. It's the movie is them. Well, no, I I could have pictured. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Barbara Stanwyck, Joan Crawford, Betty Davis doing the same role when they were 40 years old, or, you know, 36, 37 years old, doing it, you know, and, you know, it would have been just as, uh, you know, macho woman, because those were the characters these women actually played. 